If you're sharing these with others, please respect the artist's wish to have their work acknowledged by maintaining all attribution data with the links and files. File 1. This file features the music of Kevin MacLeod, Parting of the Ways, Part 1, from his album Touching Moments, available at incomtech.com. File 2. This file features the music of Taylor Sipia Hayward, The Queen and Great Glen, both from his album as the Covering Waters of the Sea, available at taylorhayward.com. File 3. This file features the music of Lena Celiana from her album Piano Paintings, available on gemendo.com. File 4. Again features Taylor Hayward's work, Without Words, available at taylorhayward.com. It is that unforgettable picture of the beloved master saying, Oh, how I long, even if on foot in the utmost poverty, to walk through every mountain and valley, to all the places in your countries, and crying aloud the greatest name to awaken the souls everywhere. Alas, he said, I cannot do it. But please, God, ye will achieve it. And the blessed beauty, Baha'u'llah, said tenderly, Oh, how I long to announce unto every spot on the surface of the earth and to carry to each one of its cities the glad tidings of this revelation that he longs to lay his face against the ground on every spot of the earth. For perhaps that will be the spot where the footsteps of one of his loved ones has passed. I am speaking on behalf of all my fellow hands, the remnants of the beloved guardian, and would like to share, once again from our wonderful writings, the staggering, fantastic spiritual power you hold in the palms of your hands. Shoghi Effendi says, Today the need is so great on the part of humanity to hear of the divine message that the believers must plunge into the work wherever and however they can, heedless of their own shortcomings. He says that we must have a perfect reliance upon God and let our hearts burn with the desire to serve His mission and proclaim His call. And then He promises, you will observe how eloquence and the power to change human hearts will come as a matter of course. From on high, you just have to report for duty with a pure heart and say, Baha'u'llah, here I am, use me, and the power will come pouring down. You know, when I was on pilgrimage, the beloved guardian said our faith was a faith of superlatives. That's why we say the greatest name, the most great peace, the greatest holy leaf, the most great prison, all superlatives. And that's the best we can do. Language is too weak to try to express the majesty, greatness and wonder of this cause of ours. When I was a young man, I came to this mountain of God and entered the presence of the beloved guardian. And the world became another world. And everything I saw except him became ashes. 
And before I left my pilgrimage, I, I know I've told some of you, I wanted to go up to the archives building and get Mullah Hussein's sword, get on a white horse, and ride out shouting, Ya Sahib Zaman, and conquer the world for him, and bring in that vast number of new believers he longed to see. Now, I am an old man. And I still haven't done it. I mean, the world throbs with the vibrations and the very soul feels shivers of awe and a stab-like thrill of delight to say, I am a Baha'i, and to know that pouring down upon you whatever task you have are the powers and blessings and infinite infallibility of the Bab, Baha'u'llah, Abdu'l-Baha, Shoghi Effendi, and our supreme universal house of justice. The mere act of arising will win for you God's help and blessing. The mere act of arising, no matter what you were, what your background is, you just arise. And the capacity to do whatever it is you want to do and has to be done will come. This is what he says. We are filled with feelings of unworthiness and dismay, and we would be truly disheartened, but for the comforting thought that if we rise to play nobly our part, every deficiency, every deficiency in our lives will be more than compensated for by the all-conquering spirit of his grace and power. Not half of your deficiencies, or some of your deficiencies, and our deficiencies, all of them. But again, we have to arise nobly to play our part. He says the very act of striving to serve, however unworthy we may feel, attracts the blessings of God, and enable us to become worthy, more fitted for the task. Isn't that a tremendous thing? Never before in the religious history of the world, in our faith, it is the service itself that is the capacity. If you arise to serve, the capacity will come to win those victories. If we arise, Shoghi Effendi says, in the advent of divine justice, the most puny and insignificant among the followers of Baha'u'llah can accomplish such wonders and would dwarf, as would dwarf the mightiest achievements of even Peter, the first apostle of Jesus the Christ and founder of his church. The poor, the illiterate, the uneducated, the peoples in the village, with those pure hearts, if they respond, they will do things greater than the first apostle of Christ. Universal House of Justice urges us to continue to do all in our power to help rescue these wonderful heroes and heroines of God, leave no opportunity unexplored, fight for them like lions. But then the Universal House of Justice does point out one danger of the crisis if we want to fully seize the opportunity of the hour. Never, they said, never let preoccupation with the Iranian crises come at the expense of neglecting the seven-year plan and its goals, which would divert the Baha'i world community from achieving the very success that is necessary for strengthening the faith and confounding those enemies and bringing greater possible help to our martyrs everywhere. Nothing less, the House of Justice says, is worthy of the sacrifice of our great precious martyrs. Unless we arise, we arise, with a mighty roar of determination and open the doors to this desperately needed vast increase in the number of new believers, we shall have failed these heroes and heroines of God who have given their life, their all. Of course, what we've done is wonderful. Don't mistake my words or theirs. It's wonderful and helpful. 
But beloved friends, if we do not bring in the flood of new believers in that climate they have changed for us, we will have made a mockery of their sacrifice. Don't worry about them. They've won their victory. They're already in the arms of their beloved master and their beloved guardian and the blessed beauty. They've won their victory, but we haven't won ours. The beloved guardian wrote, The universal house of justice will be elected, raising high its noble frame above the world of existence. It will pour its healing waters upon the warring nations and peoples of the world to wash away the evils and iniquities of the realm of dust and heal man's age-old ills and ailments. Then, in that moment, Shoghi Effendi wrote, Then will all our hopes and aspirations be realized. The pillars of the faith will be firmly established. And the cause of our Lord will bear fruit and its fame will be fulfilled from one end of the earth to the other. When that house of justice is erected, the beloved guardian said, it will be the beginning of an era the like of which has never been witnessed in bygone ages, an age the like of which the eyes of men have never seen. It is no wonder the blessed beauty Baha'u'llah declared that neither the sun nor the moon have witnessed such a day as this day. Every martyr, man, woman, and child who sacrificed their lives, they have filled the air with the spirit of sacrifice until today it is throbbing and alive with the potential promise of unprecedented teaching. And now if we will arise and seize it, we'll be astounded at the results. These heroes of God have given every one of us in this room a climate of teaching unlike anything we have ever seen before in the history of our teaching work. That's our job, to seize this, this golden opportunity. No matter what the crisis may be, whatever crisis we face, New believers, the beloved guardian said, was the answer. He said, drown your troubles in an ocean of new believers. An ocean. He said, the world, with all the various calamities that have befallen it, will be completely ravaged and its civilization demolished if the Baha'is do not come to its help and imbue it with the spirit that Baha'u'llah has brought into the world. The economic factions, political parties, national hatreds, Racial prejudice and religious antagonisms will continue to bring about devastating wars until the spirit of the cause permeates the heart of man and its universal teachings pull down the existing barriers. So he said, let us be reminded of our duty by the misery we see around us and arise for the prosecution of our noble duty. Have we imbued the world with the faith? Have we permeated the heart of men and women everywhere, all mankind? Imbue means to saturate, 
To permeate means to pervade and to pass through the very pores and again saturate with spirit. In simple terms, a beloved guardian said, Drown your troubles. Drown your troubles in an ocean of no believers. Shoki Effendi said that. Right? I know I've told you this many times, but I love it. It's so true. He said, if you need more for the pioneer teachers, traveling teachers, you need more no believers. If you need more pioneers, more no believers. If you need more assemblies, groups, and centers, you need more no believers. And above all, if you need the resources to carry out your ever-increasing work for this world healing faith, then you need a multitude of new believers if there is no other answer. Teaching, rolling the masses, everything he said depends upon it in a far greater scale than any, anything we've ever approached or even thought of before. Because I know your community, national community, said wonderful things. And here in spasmodic spurts here and there, numbers of new believers have come in. You're beginning to reach very close to your goal for new believers. But what we're talking about tonight is nothing like that. It is a tidal wave of new believers because the time is short. And without the new believers, we can't win. All of these goals have to have the flood and the message. Beloved friends, I speak with authority and from a deep and tender heart on this subject. I know, for I have been there. I sat in one of those National Spiritual Assembly chairs, and I know only too well that every National Assembly in the world does their work in the face of heavy, heart-rending burdens that they can't shake off. There's no way. Almost insuperable obstacles. And every member has to struggle to try and become a better Baha'i and a better person as they carry the burdens for all of us all over the world. Praying, thinking of ways to appeal to your heart, to touch your heart, to urge you to sacrifice for the funds. And we sometimes may have sounded too demanding or urgent, but it was because of our own frustration and longing to see our cause advance more rapidly. It is not the National Spiritual Assemblies who are demanding it is the time in the history of the world. Our wine of the love of God is intoxicating. And the faith is so powerful that we win victories no matter how... how how pitiful and puny our efforts. Still we win victories. All we really require is a kick in our convictions. <laughs> Beloved guardian didn't say that. You see, when I was on pilgrimage, beloved guardian said, whenever the goals were won, a tremendous power was released into the world. National goals and world center goals. 
And he also made it clear that winning the goals was not the victory. Those goals were the bare minimum. It was when we finished them, out of the completion of the goals, a power was released in every country. That power is going out because of that tremendous power. We can't even measure it. When I was on pilgrimage, I had just come from Wilmette, the start of the beginning year of the ten-year plan, and the house of worship in Wilmette had been completed. And the beloved guardian talked about it, and he told us what we had conquered 100 countries in 11 months since the day of that dedication, of something that never had happened before in religious history, a hundred countries in 11 months. And he said it was because the goal was completed and the power was poured out that the master had said when that house of worship was finished and dedicated to public worship, from that point of light the faith of Baha'u'llah would be carried to all parts of the world. The pioneers were on the move and a hundred countries had been conquered because of that tremendous power. Blessed Bob said, any one follower, one follower of this faith can by the leave of God prevail over all who dwell in heaven and earth. And if not us, who does the blessed duty mean when he proclaimed, he that summoneth men in my name is verily of me, and he or she will show forth that which is beyond the power of all that dwell on earth. And you tell me who was the master talking about when he said, in this century of the latter times, that was this morning when you woke up, wherever you were. That's now, right now, while you're sitting in this room. The Master said, Baha'u'llah has appeared and so resuscitated the spirits that they have manifested powers more than human if they will open their hearts to it. And what soul was our beloved guardian speaking about? Are we exact, any of us in this room, when he said, one soul, one soul, can be the cause of the spiritual illumination of the continent. Wherever I look, I see one soul. And if you still think maybe that's not you, but somebody else, uh, as sometimes we all do, then in that same paragraph, in the very next sentence, Shoghi Effendi adds, there is nothing to prevent you from arising and showing that example. Finally, from our supreme universal house of justice, source of all good, free from all error, sole refuge of a tottering civilization. Forward then, they say, confident in the power of protection of the Lord of hosts, who will use his devoted followers, us, who will use his devoted followers to bring to a despairing humanity the life-giving waters of his supreme revelation. Again, let then the individual Baha'is rise as one man and sweep away every obstacle from the onward march of the cause of God. However unpromising the prospect, Baha'u'llah is able to open doors and change conditions in ways beyond, far beyond, our understanding. More, they promise us dependence upon him, enables the Baha'is to formulate audacious plans. Now this final vote of infallible lightning. House of Justice promises us, quote, however hopeless the prospect may seem, Baha'u'llah will reinforce the believers with his hosts and will open the doors of victory before them. All things are in his mighty grasp. And if we but play our part, total and unconditional victory will instantly be ours. 
That's five separate sources of divine intelligence. Five. All who say we can do it. And we can, and it should be enough. They've already assured us if we will but arise and make the effort, we will have that great victory. First from the beloved Master. Verily the perfect and divine, the perfect and divine power will breathe in you with the bounties from the Holy Spirit and enable you to accomplish a thing the like of which hath never been seen by the eye of existence. From the beloved dark, let us pray to God that in these days of world encircling gloom, when the dark forces of nature, of hate, rebellion, anarchy, and reaction are threatening the very stability of human society, when the most precious fruits of civilization are undergoing severe and unparalleled tests, we, the Baha'i, may realize more profoundly than ever that though we are but a mere handful amidst the seething masses of the world, we are in this day the chosen instruments of God's grace, that our mission is most urgent and vital to the faith of humanity, and fortified by these sentiments, arise to achieve God's holy purpose for mankind. This is our duty, our first obligation. Therein lies the secret of the success of the cause we love so well. Therein lies the hope, the salvation of all mankind. Are we fully conscious of our responsibilities? Do we realize the urgency, the sacredness, the immensity, the glory of our task? I entreat you, dear friends, to redouble your efforts, to keep your vision clear, your hopes undimmed, your determination unshaken, so that the power of God within us may fill the world with all its glory. Beloved guardian said that if we truly knew who Baha'u'llah was and understood his station, and who we were just because we bore the name Baha'is, we would fall to the ground. I remember during my days there I was told by some of the Persian friends about the group of Persians who came on pilgrimage to the Guardian and kept telling them how wonderful their work was to pray. They were beseeching God with all of the beautiful prayers. Morning, noon, and night they prayed to Baha'u'llah to guide them aright and to change their hearts. And the beloved Guardian said, that's wonderful. But you must also now read the tablets. He says, because the prayers are what God is going to do for you. But the tablets are what you are going to do for God. A similar story of Americans who were there. But they had come in the day of the Master. And they said to him how wonderful a spirit of unity they had established on their assembly there. They didn't think there was anything like it in all of America. Master asked them how many in their community and they said nine. But they had marvelous unity and prayers all the time. How many new believers? And they said, well, no new believers for quite a few years, but we do have this wonderful unity. And the master told them that was the unity of the graveyard. <laughs> and had no place, of course, in the prospect. Is God in this great day of outpouring going to give us even greater gifts? He is indeed one of the most beautiful, tender gifts of all. So great is the need on our part 
to help humanity. So great is their need in suffering. So tremendous is the matching power of Baha'u'llah that we don't even have to search for these souls in order to find this fast increase. These prepared souls are ready, waiting, standing by, hungering for our coming. We now need only to get our spiritual army on the move. When I was on pilgrimage, the beloved guardian, one night at that wondrous table, said that in every materialistic city there were thousands of souls hungering for the word of God. The master Abdu'l-Bahá is quoted as saying in a pilgrim's note, we should pray that we may be guided to those souls whose hearts God has prepared for his cause and that they may be guided to us. Beloved Guardian says, make a special point of praying ardently, not only for success in general, but that God may send to you the souls that are ready. There are such souls in every city. And I can hear his words saying, thousands of them hungering for the word of God. God himself has prepared them for us. And they are crying out to us, come and get me, I'm waiting. As Baha'u'llah said, everybody is crying for a soul in this day. And in the words of the lovely Baha'i song, we are the soul catchers. With one such victories, there's no need to elaborate them here. But in the area of enrolling a vast number of new believers, the whole Baha'i world, almost without exception, has been a conspicuous failure. Every now and then we hear they've told us that there are premonitory signs of the entry by troops, but nothing that will change the face of the world. If we want that increase, there is only one, only one way to get it which begins, of course, with the transformation of each one of us, and then our national assemblies will harness that spirit of new creation of men and women who will cast the sleeve of holiness over the whole world. Those are the words of Baha'u'llah about what we must become. And here is exactly how we do it. First, we see the problem we face. Humanity through suffering and toil, turmoil, is swiftly moving on toward its destiny. If we be loiterers, if we fail to play our part, Surely others will be called upon to take up our task as ministers to the crying needs of this afflicted world. And how do we do it? One thing and only one thing will unfailingly and alone secure the undoubted triumph, the undoubted triumph of this sacred cause, namely the extent to which our inner life and private character mirror forth in their manifold aspects the splendor of those eternal principles proclaimed by Baha'u'llah. How could we not have this vast increase in all of this time? That's our dilemma. We must have that vast increase and we can only really achieve it when we have improved our own inner life not my idea that we should give Effendi's idea and the Master's Show Shoghi Effendi said very forcefully that we can never have these great numbers until we show this love. Let me share with you his words. Without the spirit of real love for Baha'u'llah, for his faith, and for his institutions, and especially the love of the believers for each other, the cause can never really bring in large numbers of people. It isn't preaching and rules the world wants, but a demonstration of love and action. Maybe many of your believers at home, especially the new ones, do not know the fantastic, incredible, wonder, power, and transforming love of the faith they have accepted. Baha'u'llah said in the gleanings that with just one of the powers of the greatest name, we could change the world 
And he says from his lips have gone out counsels that can satisfy the needs of the whole of mankind. And through the power of this name, the dissensions that divide the people and kindreds of the world can be blotted out from the face of the earth forever. Arise, Baha'u'llah calls out, before the nations of earth and arm thyself with the power of this most great name. A name empowered to revive the dead souls of humankind. Imagine. The only thing, beloved friends, that holds us back from this flood tide of new believers is ourselves. And how vital is that to our own spiritual life? The beloved guardian early in his ministry and the universal house of justice at the start of theirs warned us about the danger of not immersing ourselves completely in the word of God in this day. This is the quotation. Humanity through suffering is swiftly moving on toward its destiny. If we be loiterers, if we fail to play our part, surely others will be called upon to take up our tasks as ministers to the crying needs of this afflicted world. Beloved friends, others, others and not us, deserve to take up our tasks. Others, not us, are probably three of the saddest words in any language. <laughs> 